Hi, my name is Ulke Reinis and I'm product manager at HBK. In a world full of electric motors, one of them is a permanent magnet synchronous motor. And at the end of the production, you normally have a back EMF test. And today, I'll join Evelyn, who will explain how this test is used. Hi, Evelyn. What is the back EMF test used for? Hi, Sönke. Yeah, you can use um, the back EMF test um, to find uh, faults during the production of a motor. So let me explain a bit around the permanent magnet synchronous machine, what we can see here. Uh, this is a rotor and you see uh, the interior magnets, they are painted in uh, blue. And around this rotor, uh, there's a stator and the stator has windings. And um, when the rotor rotates, there is a voltage induced into the stator windings, which we call the back EMF. And how is the back EMF test normally done? In the classical way, this back EMF test is done with a second motor that drives this rotor at a constant rotational speed. And uh, for the control of the second motor, we need also an inverter and an additional power source. Uh, the goal is to calculate a constant, and this constant um, is the RMS voltage that we can then measure within uh, each phase uh, divided by the number of pole pairs and the rotational speed. So with this classical approach, are there major drawbacks? Yes, the RMS voltages um, from non-sinusoidal signals like this um, cannot be used to calculate the constant. So any uh, asymmetry or any um, non-sinusoidal signals will cause problems here. Okay, so I guess if we have a scenario like this, that by using our HPK power analyzer, we use a different approach. Yes, that's true. Um, so we don't measure the RMS voltages here, but we uh, calculate the constant with the help of space vector transformation. In a space vector transformation, you transform three phases voltages to two phases voltages. So there's one voltage component which is called alpha and one voltage component which is called the beta um, voltage. So this is U alpha and this is U beta. So the sum of both vectors is one voltage vector which equals the voltage vector in the three phase system. Um, when we have once calculated this voltage, we know the induced voltage equals the um, change in the flux at a defined time t, so that we on the other hand can calculate the flux as an integration of the induced voltage um, over a time t. So let me paint this in a different color. Um, we integrate now our alpha voltage uh, so that we will have here an uh, phi alpha and we will integrate our beta voltage so that we have a phi beta here. And again, we have the sum of both which is our linked flux. So Evelyn, what is this linked flux? So this linked flux equals um, the um, motor constant uh, that we want to calculate. And um, we can see 
with this linked flux. If there's any failure in the production, um, maybe in the windings, um, maybe the number of windings, uh, however. And this is independent of the voltages, so it doesn't matter if they're asymmetric? Um, yeah, let me show this here in an example. So you uh, remember our original signals, which are not sinusoidal. Um, I calculated from these signals here um, the voltage components U alpha and U beta with the space vector transformation. Um, then I integrated both. Uh, and here you see now we will have this offset. Yeah, due to these uh, non-sinusoidal signals. But in the next step, I calculate the mean from uh, each flux component and remove the offset uh, by removing the mean from these uh, calculated components. And as a result, I will have two flux components that I can add geometrically to the linked flux to our um, motor constant. Okay, and these steps, do I always have to do them step by step? Uh, no, that's a great thing within our software that we can calculate all the steps in one formula. Yeah, so uh, what you see here, that's our formula wizard. And uh, when I call the function back EMF, it's only that I need to enter here the original three uh, phases uh, that I measured. I need to calculate, uh, enter the number of pole pairs and I need to tell the system whether I measure the uh, phase or the phase-to-phase -phase voltages. And that's all. I just click OK and then I can see here my back EMF constant. Okay, so the calculation got way easier with this yeah. uh, method. Are there additional benefits, like having an easier test stand? Um, yeah, so um, at least um, we don't need to have a constant speed uh, with which the rotor is driven. Yeah, because we are calculating everything cycle based. Yeah, which means we only need a few cycles and uh, these few cycles can also be produced when we turn around the rotor manually. Yeah? So um, we can reduce the cost for a second machine that drives our rotor. Thank you very much, Evelyn. We are welcome. So if you want to have additional information about our seminars, please visit our website hbcable.com for the academy or write an email to academy at hbcable.com. Goodbye.